Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Shiny Boots. I will be taking you on a tour around the UK looking at structures and architecture, which pique my interest. We'll be starting with viaducts. And the story, the history of viaducts is pretty interesting because it begins in Newton the Willows, which is a really tiny place close to St. Helens where I was born. We're going to be looking at the Manchester Liverpool line and Newton the Willows is about halfway down the line. The Sankey Viaduct, which we're gonna have a look at first in Newton the Willows, is described as being the earliest major railway viaduct in the world. So let's go visit it. Welcome. And this is what Sankey Viaduct looks like today. The clouds had just opened, England style, as I arrived. And you'll see in here that the viaduct is still fully functioning, with trains passing over pretty regularly. The Sankey Viaduct was built by George Stevenson in 1828 to 1829 to take the Liverpool and Manchester Railway across the Sankey Valley. The Sankey Viaduct is a grade one listed structure and is described by Heritage England as the earliest major railway viaduct in the world. In 1826, the Act for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway was passed by Parliament. And this is to be the world's first intercity railway. George Stevenson was the company's principal engineer for the 50 kilometre or 31 mile route between Liverpool and Manchester. The Sankey Valley presented two obstacles to the engineers, which were the Sankey Brook and the Sankey Canal. And this canal was originally constructed to link St. Helens to the River Mersey, which is in Liverpool. The engineered waterway could be regarded as the first canal built in England since Roman times. The viaduct stands 21 metres above Sankey Brook and it has nine semicircular arches spanning 15 metres each. As previously mentioned, this line is 31 miles long. The Sankey Viaduct is one of 64 bridges and viaducts that make up the line from Liverpool to Manchester. I was actually going to end there and move on to a different viaduct that I'd come across recently. But the more I started to dig into the Liverpool and Manchester railway line, the more curious the story becomes. Essentially, this is the line of first. And I thought I would continue sharing these firsts and obstacles that George Stevenson and his team overcame. Let's do a quick recap of firsts so far. Sankey Valley is the first viaduct. And the Liverpool to Manchester line is the first intercity railway. And let's not forget, Sankey Canal is the first one built after the Romans in 1757. Here we can see Liverpool and Manchester. And we're gonna be looking more towards the Liverpool end of the line now, to a place called Olive Mount. I used to ride this train pretty much every weekend as a kid. St. Helens is pretty close to Liverpool and Liverpool's a really cool city. And every time we'd go through Olive Mount Cutting, I'd always think about how dark it got. And it's only now that I've started researching these kinds of topics that I realize how crazy and impossible this task seems to be if we go off how little 
technology we supposedly had in the 1820s. And this is uh, obviously another little bridgeway that I found. <laughs> Olive Mount Cutting, which was opened in 1830, is a two mile or 3.2 kilometer sandstone railway cutting on the line to Manchester, four miles from Liverpool. The cutting is 80 feet or 24 meters deep and is situated between Wavertree and Broad Green. The railway's engineer, George Stevenson, had hoped to avoid the problem of creating the cutting. However, in the 1820s, no task is too difficult. Here's a lovely painting of the workers hard at it. Looks like an easy task. After Olive Mount, we have Wapping or Edge Hill Tunnel, also known as Edge Hill Cutting. This is the stop before Liverpool. What's really curious about this is that it was built before the line. Wapping or Edge Hill Tunnel was constructed between 1826 and 1829 by George Stevenson again. And it was the first transport tunnel in the world to be bored under a city. This is how Wapping Tunnel used to look. And this is what it looks like now. Had a little look on Google Earth and found some more interesting looking tunnels, which are supporting all of these houses. It's absolutely insane. A little bit of history about Edge Hill Cutting or the Cavendish Cutting, it's also called here. The new route entering the city centre from the east required considerable engineering works. The one in 48 gradient of the tunnel was much too steep for the power of the steam locomotives of the day. Why? Why would they give it an incline? So to overcome this, a large stationary steam engine was installed at the Cavendish Cutting at Edge Hill in a short tunnel bored into the rock face on the side of the cutting near a decorative Moorish arch. Goods wagons were hauled by rope up from the Park Lane goods station. Does any of this make sense? Why would they build a tunnel that wasn't functional? Surprise, surprise, Stevenson also built this. As well as the engineering achievements, Stevenson was asked by the directors to build something ornate on the line. Not sure what they were thinking when they built this. They ultimately created more obstacles with the tunnel. Came across this guy on YouTube called Martin Zero, who actually goes down and has a look at all of these arches and all of the tunnels, which are not really in use anymore. I'd definitely check out his video if you're interested in looking at each of the tunnels in more depth. Okay, we have a timeline, starting from 1820. You'll see here that Liverpool is expanding, Manchester's the centre of industry, and the problem that needed to be solved was how they were going to transport goods from Manchester to Liverpool. Canals were slow and expensive. So in 1822, the first proposal for a railway was brought about. In 1824, the plans were rejected. And then we move on to 1826, where we have new proposals and a revised route. And this is where George Stevenson is appointed engineer. 1826 is where the work begins on Chat Moss. Let's have a little look at Chat Moss. Chat Moss is a large area of a peat bog. So here we have another obstacle. George's initial idea was to dump enough spoil in the bog 
so that it would reach the bottom. Chat Moss was named a bottomless pit. This approach turned out to be impractical and the eventual solution was to build the line on a floating wood and stone foundation. It was hailed as a great triumph of engineering. Another obstacle overcome. So they were doing chat moss for a couple of years. Apparently they had to put planks of wood down to balance on so they didn't sink. <laughs> and at the same time they were building Wapping Tunnel that we've already looked at. 1828, we've got Sankey Viaduct, Newton Bridge, and 1829, the railway begins to take shape, but they have another problem because they don't know how to operate the trains. Look, I'm no engineer, but surely they would have thought about how they were gonna operate the trains before they started this mammoth project. But no, they built it all first, and then a year before they're gonna open, they thought about how they were gonna operate the whole thing. <laughs> and in 1829, they ran the Rain Hill Locomotive Trials. It was a competition, mm-hmm, to see who can design the best steam locomotive to work on the railway. And the prize was 500 quid. Here is the Skew Bridge at Rain Hill where the trials took place. And as we can see here, Stevenson Skew Arch Bridge is the first to cross any railway at an angle. There were five entrants. Here they are. George Stevenson's son won the competition with Rocket. The trials were described as having a great carnival atmosphere and a large tent was erected for ladies. <laughs> And there you have it, in less than a year, bish bash bosh, the railway's complete and open. The Moorish Arch didn't last too long. It was taken down in the 1860s. And here's a depiction of where the Moorish Arch would have been. Cheers, Kev. Crown Street Station used to be the end of the line in Liverpool. But after six years, they realized it was too far from Liverpool city center. And in 1836, Lime Street Station opened, which is still the end of the line today, with all of its cuttings into the rock and the bridges and tunnels that needed to be, be built for that. We can see where the cutting was made for Crown Street Station. And then this additional cutting had to have been made for Lime Street Station all the way down here, heading right towards Lime Street. And this will have had to have been dug out at some point afterwards to have the station open in 1936. This is what Lime Street Station looks like today. But this is apparently how it looked in 1836. And here it says it had a wooden train shed. Does this look wooden? Look how ornate the station is. How tall those archways are and all of the pillars. The station was demolished and replaced by a new station in 1849. However, I have found conflicting stories about this saying that a new station was built in 1867 according to a website talking about this hotel, which is the Northwestern Hotel located next to Lime Street Station. Let's remember that these are the people who constructed all of this engineering works. And these are the people with the horse and carts who dug everything out. And what I find particularly noteworthy is given the size of these projects, nothing ever goes wrong. There's never any delays. It's all really easy, smooth sailing. I don't know if you've ever worked on a project before and I've worked on many and it isn't always realistic that everything goes to plan, but it does in this time period in the early 1800s. And these people must have had an unlimited pot because money seems no object. Everything is the biggest, the grandest we've ever seen. 
And where did they get all the bricks from? That's something I'll be exploring in future videos. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you have any viaducts in your area that you'd love me to go and check out, let me know. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.